Hades is one of the biggest games of recent times, but it doesn't have that much of a reputation. Obviously, Supergiant has been entertaining audiences for over a decade with games like Bastion, Transistor, and Pyre, but none of them have reached the heights of the super sexy, terrifyingly well-written, perfectly executed Greek pantheon crawler. I'm not sure this level of excellence would have been possible without careful planning of the game over the years with extensive updates and constant communication with the fans. Supergiant explores a new genre for the first time, with more characters and mechanics than ever before, so it needs a helping hand, although it comes first in the form of the people who help the design succeed. Now, after selling millions of copies on every platform under the sun, a sequel is in the works, and it's limited in ways you'd never expect from the industry. Instead of extending the production cycle in order to have a larger finished game at launch, Supergiant decided to go back to the sources that have served it well in the past. I think the studio has more capital, prestige and potential than I thought, Hades put them on a pedestal and they've made great use of it ever since. But this success seems to humble them. Much of the making of Hades, which no clip documented at the time, was overwhelming, especially after the pandemic tore through the studio before the finish line. It was an instant hit on the Nintendo Switch with tons of awards and no time to catch your breath. Years have passed since then, and Hades 2 was conceived behind the scenes. Spencer Wang, the artist and designer who worked on the game and his studio was responsible for producing the trailer, told me that Supergiant remains a tight-knit, reliable team that operates on a level playing field and knows when to use talent work done and deliver self-explanatory results. They have milestones and goals, like many others, but this free-form approach removes the advantage of allowing creativity to flourish in the apparent lack of expectations. Early access can only help that philosophy, reaction to the sequel's return to early access and PC exclusivity has been mixed, and when development ends in 2024 or later, a console version may follow. I understand the surprise, as many casual fans might expect a sequel to a game of this magnitude to be stronger than ever, but the restraint may be its most valuable asset. Supergiant has done this before, now knows what works and what doesn't, and how it uses all that accumulated knowledge to solve incremental development problems. That means it can avoid the same mistakes and double down on it, building a bigger, more ambitious ride in the process. I think there's also a selfish preference for early access. I had a lot of fun working on the first game, even though I wasn't as invested in each new release as I wanted to be, seeing the passion of the team and the ever-growing number of adoring fans still gave me joy. Is this thing. It was great to see it come to life and slowly take its final shape, and the community played a big part in that. Hades 2 will inevitably launch with high expectations and may not be lucky to build overtime from a small audience, but the fact that Supergiant didn't let that affect its approach deserves credit. Every new character, update, mechanic, and little iteration makes the sequel stronger and builds it into something special. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and support my channel.